Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for the end of life care and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It is time to share the way we want to live our lives at the end of our lives. And it's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and don't want for ourselves. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care unit. Together, as we explore the various paths to life and together we can make this difficult conversation easier. Together, we can make sure that our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. If you're ready to join us, we ask, navigate the journey. In the past six months, we have invited members of various religions and traditions to talk to us about the end of life customs in their culture. There is a nexus, a nexus between your choices, options, the government, and grassroots organized organizations. It's very simple. Grassroots organizations all inspire or challenge us to think about an aspect of our life in a new way. Great leaders inspire action. It all starts with the question, why? Be it Martin Luther King Jr., the Wright brothers, or Nikola Tesla, they all think, act, and communicate the exact same way. And it is complete opposite from the rest of us. Inspired leaders and organizations, regardless of their size, industry, think, act, and communicate from inside. Why? Out. What? Whereas everyone else goes from outside in, from clearest thinking, what, to the fuzziest thinking, why? Today's guest is one of those people, Kristen Amato, a beautiful young lady whose sole purpose in life is to make the world a better place. She has chosen grassroots activities as her vehicle. And my now, my new best friend, <laughs> Kristen Hamada. Thank you welcome, so much. Welcome, 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 and join the, us We are while we navigate this journey through life. And she is a beautiful young lady from Hawaii. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we were just talking about you being an immigrant in the UK. Yes. So, and since immigration is at the top of everybody's vocabulary these days, people that didn't know what an immigrant was are now talking about immigration. So, mm -hmm. so tell us, tell us about Kristen and why you found yourself as an immigrant. You're originally from Hawaii, right? And I then am. you find mm -hmm. yourself an immigrant someplace else. Mm -hmm. So how does that happen? So uh, I'm from Aea. Uh, I was born and raised here. Uh, I ended up in the UK to study. So I went there for a year to do a master's program. And you know, it's, it's something different um, to go sort of from country to big city. It was my first time uh, really like living in a big city. And so it was exciting. After that, uh, after I studied, I, I stayed on. Um, and yeah, like you said, I learned a lot about uh, in immigration, and um, I think that some of how we discuss immigration um, needs to shift a bit. You know, uh, in uh, some circles, you might call it you know issues around freedom of movement. To think about how we can or can't move freely between um, places, uh, and. You know, like we were talking about before, it's it's difficult. My situation was um, not at all one that uh, was the most dire or anything like that. I had a lot of relative privilege um, in a lot of ways. You know, we were saying that I spoke English as a first language. I was a computer literate, like educated through a certain level, and that all um, made going through that system easier. Um, but I know that there's tons of other people, probably, you know, the clear majority of people out there going through that system are not in the same position um, 
that I am, and it's difficult. It's it is. difficult. It is. Yes, it is. And especially with the language. Now, uh, the United Nations uh, Declaration of Human Rights, which the UK uh, did ratify, the United States did not, even though Eleanor Roosevelt was one of the principal authors, but it guarantees the right of movement. Mm -hmm. And yet, all of these countries ratify it, all of them sign on, they're all members of the UN, and there is no right of movement. But it's, it's written, mm -hmm. somebody wrote it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but nobody bothered to read it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too, um, some of it too is maybe thinking about people that want to stay in, like settle in a place. Like if I wanted to go to the UK, I mean, as an American, you know, we have a lot of privileges as well. Um, I could go, I could visit, be a tourist, enjoy um, all of the really awesome cultural things about the UK and wider Europe as well. Um, but it was really, um, you know, the process that I went to was really about settling there and staying there for a long time. Um, and so there was all of these steps that had to be taken, you know, kind of as the years went on. So, you know, I might apply for a visa one year and then have to also apply the next year. I might need to apply then two years after that. So there's all of these different steps and also different criteria that you really had to meet in order to be able to stay there. Um, and of course, too, it costs money. Oh, it does. Yeah. Well, listen, now we have people, Americans all over the world who are in prison that they, they go and through the immigration process and then they find themselves in prison and they don't know what they did. Mm -hmm. What is that about? Do you know? Have you, do you, did you encounter any of that? So um, in the UK, there are people who, uh, you know, who haven't really committed a crime, um, who haven't necessarily broken immigration law, but are uh, in uh, privately run prisons, um, sometimes for years, just in detention. Uh, and it's, it's really awful and it's dehumanizing. Um, so the prisons are mostly filled with, you know, people like us, um, a lot of uh, people of color, um, sometimes children as well. And <coughs> it's just, um, you know, it's not the right way to treat people who, you know, you know any person really, um, who might have made an error um, or who, you know, really kind of deserves their freedom. Um, and is there anything that the government this government, the American government, can do for them? So I don't know specifically about, I would say, Americans that are maybe in, in the UK or anything like that. Usually in the UK, um, it's people that have come over from like maybe ex-colonies and things oh. like that. Um, so I, I know, yeah, just less about Americans that, that might be there. And also, too, I think that there's probably a degree of uh, leeway that people might get as someone, you know, and this is kind of like racialized or glo global privilege. Um, you know, as somebody from the U.S., you know, you have an American passport, maybe people will be more lenient. I don't know if it's like a thing uh, for sure, but I'm just saying that these things, you know, this is how kind of privilege works, you know, right. it's a yes. little bit invisible sometimes. And uh, um, yeah, and that that's just kind of how, how it it happens. So now you are a community activist. Mm -hmm. And for my audience, you must know that I'm absolutely in love with this young lady. I came into the world, I was born into Jim Crow and came of age in the Civil Rights Movement. So I have been an activist all of my life. Mm -hmm. And if you read my resume, it, it begins, the first words is, are, I am a political junkie. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. So. It is absolutely delightful to meet this beautiful young lady who has that <laughs> spirit, that energy, that glow. There is an inner something, and I don't know how to express it, that comes when you can look at people and tell that's an activist because it shows, <laughs> it glows, that willingness to take a stand. Mm -hmm. 
That's just, really just thank you. <laughs> step forward. Mm -hmm. So, tell us about your activities here in Honolulu as an activist. What are you doing? And I hate to say why, but our audience probably need our audience needs to know and why. Okay. Mainly why, and what is the goal? Where where are you going? With this particular activity that you're embarked in now. Okay, so there's, um, I would say there's a few different things that I have uh, gotten involved with. Um, one of the things is really going to be focused around the 2018 elections, and hopefully we can talk more about that in the future. Um, and also kind of getting getting to understand what's going on, um, kind of in the activist community as far as you know, environmental issues are really important. Um, community uh you know housing is a really important issue here as well um even things like ed education is really important and uh the the reason why i'm involved in all of these different in different things um i think a lot of people who you know choose to get involved i'm sure you know this will be <laughs> involved in a lot of different things right because yes. we're trying to change so many things um and we see how a lot of the injustices are linked to each other. Um, and so, you know, um, you can't just do a single, work on a single issue and that's it. You know, the single issue kind of life is not, is not how we live. Um, so I'm involved in different things, um, really because I, I believe in the power of everyday people um, to get involved, to make a change. Uh, I think that people, when given the opportunity, want want to get involved um, and want to be a part of something in Hawaii, uh, it's it's really awesome because there's so many great community builders here, and we just you know build communities kind of around everything, um, and that's such a great thing. Um, in addition to that, uh, we can we build community to find meaning for ourselves. Um, and part of that is also feeling like you're giving back, but also creating some sort of positive change. So my, I guess, broadly the goal or, is to create positive change in Hawaii, to see our communities coming together, uh, to see our communities um, supporting each other, uh, to see, uh, change really happen for people because Hawaii has changed a lot? Would, I, I know this is a strange question, would we recognize change if we saw it? Because yeah. from where we were when I started to mm -hmm. where we are now, wow, the change. Mm -hmm. But in the process, did we see the change? So I think that we do. I think that we do and I think that in Hawaii, um, people kind of look for it because people understand very deeply their their communities. Um, you know, uh, I guess one of the things I just thought of is that um, you know when you're driving someplace, people give you directions and they're like, you know, go three streets. It's like there's a tree that looks like a lollipop, and then you got to turn the right across the street. So people know our communities so well, and so when things change, people know like, and they notice. Or, like yeah, when you live on an island, you sort of have to do that. Yeah. Yes. It, but now we are going to take a break, and when mm -hmm. we come back, I'd like to talk because I am a political junkie. I'd like to talk about the coming election, the mm -hmm. legislature, and how do you see us moving forward with that? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Olelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. 
Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. And we are back with this lovely, lovely new best friend, Kristen. <laughs> and Kristen is a community activist. And we are going to talk about my favorite subject, and that is the politics of living in Hawaii and your, the new energy, and I love it, the new energy into the coming election, uh, the, the legislative process, the whole uh, what is going on at the Capitol, the bills that you will you like or don't like and what have you and so yeah that's another three or four hours mm -hmm. but we're gonna talk about it so your plan for the election let's start there um my own sort of personal plans i guess or, uh, or a community that you belong to either way so i think i always think it's good um, just as a general rule to have contested elections, I hope people stand for it. Um, I, I hope that people put themselves forward just because that, that's how democracy works, you know? Like, we need to be having a and discussion. We want you to do that. I mean, not you stand for election, but we really want you to get people out there. Last election, we had 51 House members. 30 went unchallenged. Mm -hmm. That's not good. Mm -hmm. That's not good for democracy because they get so complacent. They don't have to do what the public wants mm -hmm. because there's no, no mm -hmm. penalty for not doing. Mm -hmm. So you have to give them, make sure there is a penalty for not mm -hmm. doing what the community wants. At least that's the way I see it. Well, I think, too, it's, it's all of our jobs oh. um, as just a, as citizens, members of society, and a lot too when I think about people getting involved um, and uh, you know putting themselves forward for things um, it's not just the 2018 elections it's really we need leadership at lots and lots of different levels um, you know there are so many different ways that people can be involved you know very locally to them over um, uh, a decision-making process that does impact uh, their lives and the lives of people around them. So like things like PTA, homeowners associations, like um, different like boards, even things like the Electoral Commission, uh, the Ethics Commission and uh, Campaign Finance. These are all different ways that people can be involved um, and can put themselves forward for something. You know, I hadn't thought about it until you moment. Kristen is, that's the, the beauty of young brains. Uh, the so many of those boards go unfilled. Mm -hmm. So you get the same people over and over and over mm -hmm. again when there is a process that you can apply, mm -hmm. which most of us, most people don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, I think you're right about those. We don't even think about neighborhood board and the library and all of these other things that we mm -hmm. can do to make a difference. Mm -hmm and ordinary people. You don't have mm -hmm. to be a PhD or a yeah. scholar. You ordinary people can do to really impact the community. And we need that yeah. desperately. We need new blood. Because if you look at these, we see the same people regurgitated through, mm -hmm. throughout the process. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why it is stagnant. Mm -hmm. Or at least I see it as stagnant. Mm -hmm. but, well, and I, I think it's it's really awesome that you know there are some really committed people that have time and energy to do all of it. Um, but some of it is just you know opening up the discussion. Like if we want a thriving democracy, there has to be you know more discussion, more debates. You know, yeah, people disagree on stuff, um, uh, but you know we can't sort of keep talking amongst ourselves. We have to invite new people in. And that's like where new ideas come in as well. Uh, I think with the neighborhood board stuff recently, I guess the last elections, people say there's a lot of people putting themselves forward, which is awesome. It was. Oh, yeah. it is, yeah. Yeah, and I hope for those people that have put themselves forward, um, if they didn't get elected, like find some other way to get involved. There are tons of other opportunities. Um, if you think about who makes decisions in your local area, 
Uh, and, you know, can I be a part of that? Can I influence that? Um, you know, what decisions are being made and how can we just make it better? Well, with the neighborhood board, you, it, you show up. Now, you don't have to be elected. You be part of the audience and challenge. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is what active yeah, yeah. and engage yeah. And, and, and engage and and with this legislative this is the second part of the biennial mm -hmm. for anybody that doesn't know our legislature is a two-year process and we have the first part is in the odd year and the second part is an even year mm -hmm. and so we have a lot of bills that are holdovers a lot of bills died so there'll be a new one now, usually there are about 2,500 bills proposed yeah. every year. There's no way, no way that any one legislator can read that many. Mm -hmm. So their office goes through and they give them a synopsis. This is it. So they don't really know what's in it. So unless you, me, people like us, and our audience show up mm -hmm. regularly and say, this is what's in the bill. This is why we like it. This is why you need to act on it. Because they really, you know, they show up and they count the yeses, yes, 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 no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. But do they really read it? So you then become the eyes and the ears of whatever bill you're supporting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we talked about the suntan, Stuff, oh, that bio, yeah. whatever that mm -hmm. stuff is. And you say, there's a bill against that. You say, what? But when you say, well, that's what's killing the coral, and without coral, we don't have a healthy ocean, then it takes on a different meaning. Mm -hmm. So we need people to talk about that, to mm -hmm. write op ed pieces, to be a part of the community. Mm -hmm. And that's where I come from as an activist. That's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, you know, a lot of organizing, I mean, the foundation of, of organizing, as you know, is just a one-to-one -one conversation. You just chat, having a chat with someone about, you know, your, about your issue, asking them about their opinion, um, and, you know, having a discussion about it. Maybe they agree, maybe they don't agree. Um, but we need to be having lots more of those conversations with people who also, you know, who are not activists, people who are, what you want to be talking to is, you know, everyone else out there who is, you know, has no idea what this, what, what the sunscreen thing yeah, is, yes. you know, um, or, uh, you know, they don't understand, you know, things about GMOs. That's, that's all cool. Like we all, you know, there's so much out there to know, um, but we need to be having those conversations in mass, and some of the ways too is thinking about how do we communicate about these things, um, you know. And face-to-face -face conversation is a great way uh, because, like, we're sitting here, yeah, chatting back and forth, and um, yeah, it's it's very it's a different mode of communicating than uh, you know being in the press and things like that, although those things are important too. Um, we need to start having conversations in mass with people about the things that are important to us and then also at the same time be really listening to the things that are important to them um, because they might not understand or they might not even like the idea, you know, maybe they don't go beach that much. Um, <laughs> but maybe they, you know, yeah. something else is important to them, you know, their family and they really want, you know, uh, uh, you know, to make sure that the environment is clean for, for their for kids, kids, you know. So we need to find out, you know, the things that are important to people and how they're going to access the issues that are really, like, important to Hawaii, you know, Hawaii's communities. We have so many, because we have such a precious and fragile environment, we need to talk to each other exactly what you said, Kristen, about the things. Is it, are the bees your issue? Mm -hmm. Is the suntan lotion your issue? Uh, traffic, everybody's traffic. Yeah, yeah, no one And what are we gonna do with the rail? Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody talks about the rail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether they like it or don't like it, they talk about it. 
Yeah, yeah. people have a view on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for everybody's sure. got a view. Yeah. Everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> uh, but I love what you said about listening, hearing the other person, mm -hmm. really hearing their side, and and somehow we can we can come to something that makes sense if we listen. Mm -hmm. I think. I think. And and listening to you is is a real pleasure. Oh, it's, it's so nice of <laughs> you. It is so. So refreshing mm -hmm. uh, to see that energy, that mm -hmm. drive, that sparkle that mm -hmm. says, here I am, I'm going to make a difference in the world. That's really kind <laughs> of you. <laughs> um, yeah. It, well, I don't know that I'm being kind. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that's, that's what it is, and that's what it takes to make a better world. The people like you, Kristen, who, who love what you're doing, and it shows. That's that's really, really nice of you. Um, I really appreciate that. And I also do think that like listening is, it's really important because that's kind of where you just understand where people are coming from. Um, and, you know, again, it's important for democracy that we listen to each other. Um, you know, we're never going to agree on everything. Uh, but if we can get to the point where we're able to, you know, disagree and like accept that that's something but just understand each other then it's just a much better place than not having that conversation at all or you know having a very limited conversation we need to open the conversation up and um and also win people over you know um uh th through listening and then you know putting our arguments forward for why we think you know this needs to happen in order for the change that we want to occur. Uh, and yeah, we just need to be opening that, those conversations, you know, many and many times over and just getting out there, talking to our neighbors. Well, it is a pleasure having a conversation with my new best friend, Kristen <laughs> Almada. And you will come back, won't you? Yes, yes. Yes, please. Yeah. This Thank is you delightful, so much. and I want you to come back as fairly regular as we move through the process from today until the time of the election. You can just okay. come back periodically. Let's mm -hmm. see what progress is being made. Mm -hmm. and, Thank you. And I'm sure our audience will love it. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next week. Aloha.